Hey there everybody, I'm just cracking on with the interiors of the built rooms now. Um, okay, I've actually managed to pick the, the uglier side of the building for you as well. But right now, um, I'm just starting on these and I decided that the rooms are going to be coloured by blocks. Once again, I'm just blobbing paint straight in. Um, partly because, well in my opinion, it saves a bit of waste and partly because I'm lazy. Um, each block's having like a themed colour, so when all the final pieces go on, they'll either be like yellow, red, blue, green. I haven't decided exactly what they're going to be. Partly it's down to what spray paint I have available. Um, I'm just using through reserve, like I said before. And then um, I've got a brush loaded with water, um, and I'm just again moving pigment around, just like when I was doing the top, because uh, I'm going for this kind of tiled effect. I uh, only really need two brushes for doing this. Uh, it's a little note, if you want to get a clean line and just remove all the light, get your brush, place it, put all the pressure through the brush and then run the brush along into the edge and that will give you a nice clean line. Uh, this is how you do cutting if you are literally painting and decorating rather than painting minis. You get that line and you just let the brush follow along and it enables you to do sort of perfect into the corner lines freehand without having to mask anything off. Uh, it's kind of a skill I suppose but this is, well, it's part of the skill of painting. And I did actually, well, I learned how to paint from a guy called Michael Chater, right? I mean, paint on canvas and uh, draw, like, flat painting as opposed to three-dimensional painting. And the two things are kind of different. Uh, there are similarities in places. But, um... He taught me all about how to hold brushes, like you see I'm holding the brush like this at the moment. It's because it gives me good control whilst being able to reach in. I can't remember exactly how many there are, but I think there's something like 12 or 15 ways of holding a brush. And I can't remember them all for the life of me anymore. Once upon a time I could. Um, when I was considerably younger than I am now. Um, and I thought, I'm going to be a painter when I grow up. And yeah, I'm a painter. Check me out. Different kind, and in fact, in some respects, I enjoy this kind of painting a bit more. So, as you can see, I'm laying down quite an intense bright blue. In some respects, I would like it to be a bit whiter than this, but um, this is the palest blue I have without um, messing with it, so I'm sticking with it. The other thing you notice is um, I'm having to, well, I think you might not be able to actually see me, but I'm going to stand up to get these now. The bottom balcony is a bit harder to cut in because you have to cut it in from some sort of funny angle. But these top ones, no, they're not so hard. Uh, the other thing is, you know, just for your sake, your left hand a little bit as well. Um, if you're not very dexterous, don't use your left hand, or your off hand, if you're left handed, use your left hand. If you are right handed, probably best not to. With a bit of practice though, you can actually get it so that you, um, at least on pretty basic painting like this, I mean I'm only laying flat paint at the end of the day, I'm not really you know, I'm not doing anything particularly special. Also, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to dot the eyes on a 28mm miniature. Um, that's a fun task. I really do love the Infinity Miniatures, but man, sometimes, sometimes I'm a bit like, There's too much detail. Why would you do this to me? Now I have to be a perfectionist and get all the detail done. Okay, so the other thing you need is you need a small brush. And this is because my flat brush, uh, because it's not in perfect condition as well, it's a nightmare for cutting in the back corner, so you just want a little. Um, this is just a you know a, a triple zero normal brush. 
and I'm just going to use that to cut in the back line and again you find your line you stick to it the most important thing when you're cutting in lines like this is that the line is clean yeah, ideally it wants to cover the whole floor in some respects although you don't want to make your build like that on purpose uh, it can be easier when there's a little gap at the edge but if you had a gap all the way around your floor wouldn't be standing up and uh, security is important well, I haven't mentioned it before, one of the nice things about this material is you don't actually have to insert blocks into the corners in order to create support for the floors because normally I would have little triangles wedged up in the corners of the top corners of the room and I'm really happy about that because it means that when you look into the room sort of from an upwards angle um, you have nice flat smooth ceilings as you do in real life rather than having um, support wedges in order to make sure the floor doesn't fall down under the weight of miniatures. Uh, I haven't really designed these with having a, having a shed load of heavy miniatures in them but it's for infinity so you shouldn't really have a shed load of miniatures on the game table and also to be quite honest with you, tags should not be in these buildings. These are civilian buildings and you shouldn't be busting in and causing civilians a horrible day. Well, the other thing I'm going to do right now, I'm just dipping my brush in water, offloading some of the water on the floor below. Um, it's just because I want this light, so I'm stealing the pigment and I'm just transferring it onto the floor. Trans Hebe -hoo -dee, Hebe -dee. Transferring it onto the floor below. This will allow me to lighten up the paint quite naturally just by thinning out pigment. Um, I don't want to leave brush marks so I will dab at it a bit in a minute. Um, and I'm going to be doing each flat block in a different set of colours like I said. I mean this might not be the blue block, I'm not sure if I have any blue spray paint you see. And that will be the decide ultimate deciding factor um, on what sort of colour code the block is. This might end up being the green block you see or the turquoise block. Um, also, I don't want the tiles to entirely match the um, panel choices for colours because uh, I want differentiation. Differentiation is important, that will make your buildings look more realistic. Same with um, if you're deciding to make up a uniform for your miniatures. It's the same kind of rules like tops and tails, floors and ceilings. Uh, you always want your ceilings white, you always want your floors dark uh, or darker than your walls slash ceilings. Um, if in doubt paint it magnolia or white. Uh, if you're in sci-fi land which we are paint it white. If you're in the Mediterranean paint it white. Um, that's like your adobe housing kind of stuff which is pretty standard for the Mediterranean area you know you sort of deserty kind of places. Uh, you know, if you're in the older Europe, paint it grey or terracotta because we used a lot of grey, a lot of terracotta. But if you're in like southern France, white and terracotta is fine as well because they tended to use terracotta tiling on the roofs in the southern France. Um, well, the places that I've seen, I've been to a few very old places. Um, like, uh, some old Templar villages and stuff down in the south of France and they use these sort of rest on terracotta tiles um, terracotta terracotta sorry uh, I speak using the Queen's English but yes yeah, you can just see that, um, well hopefully you can see it's just thinning out the colour a bit and actually by transferring it down to the bottom I've, I've sort of I've part filled in the bottom for colour uh, this pigment has very good coverage um, I think maybe it's just because it's blue. Blues tend to be a heavier pigment than anything else. Uh, red tends to be one of those translucent pigments. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to crack on, I'll get all the, the flats painted in and then I'll show you the different floor colours I've painted them in. Then I'll just show you how I'm inking them up 
and because again I'm going to use ink so it's much the same process I've used for the, the roof uh, I just want to kind of make the floor zing a bit and then I'll show you the colours that I'm using so for instance on this one I am using Magic Blue from the game colour range from Vallejo Paints but I'll go through all this in a mo once I've got it done or I'll go through the others anyway and tell you what paints I've used for the base colour and then I'll tell you what ink I'm using so that you can replicate this if you like the effect on something that you make. Okay, catch you in a mo. Okay, so first of all, at number one we have Heavy Golden Brown from the extra opaque range of uh, Vallejo's paint. This is going to get a brown ink wash. At number two we have Magic Blue and this will get a blue ink wash and it will literally be a blue blue with number three we have mahogany brown which is from Vallejo model color range and this will get a purple ink wash and with number four we have dead flesh from Vallejo's game color range and this will get a green ink wash um, just a little note I'm using kind of quite high contrast colours. It's going to be a dark blue and quash on the light blue. I might have even gone powder blue, like uh, if you mix blue and white together, basically. Uh, very light blue. I don't have any pre mixed or um, proper paint in that colour. But other than that, um, it's just using these kind of contrasting colours and differentiated colours in order to create uh, an interesting variable texture. Just going to start laying up ink now. Uh, this is a an old brown games workshop ink that I've had for millennia. I mean, I've literally I've had this for about twenty years. Um, yeah, but I've mixed it about eight parts water, one part ink, and as you can see, it's very very thin, and I am in no way bothered about. Uh, having a high level of saturation and it's just because I'm laying brown over yellow what I really want is um, a highly variegated tone um, that is what that what this will give me I may have made it a little bit too thin as you can see the ink is not gaining traction on the surface at all what I really want is that kind of uh, 60s 70s feel where you sort of have a very yellow tile in the middle with maybe a bit of a highlight rim around the edge and uh, a brown grout or sort of brown in the gaps. So again, I'm really, really very unfussed about uh, Uh, having a, sort of a perfect mix for a nice even even glaze so that everything's perfectly even. I don't want everything to be even. Uh, one of the errors I made on some of the rooftops of this building, these buildings, in fact, is uh, saturating too much pigment. And again, I'm just going to point out I am using water. I am not using um, an emulsifying agent. Um, Partly because I know how water behaves, and I'm not actually overly familiar with emulsifying agents. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with them though. I have used them in the past for canvas painting, and you could get like matting agents and um, things for making them sort of textured or heavier or lighter and sort of burr and burr and burr, and there's lots of different things you can do with them. Uh, also, with this, the other thing is, I want these to sort of sit well with the colour panels. So, for instance, this will probably have, uh, when I've put in all the doors, I mean, all the doors will probably yellow. The, um, yeah, it's probably going to look a bit bright and hideous in some respect. Like, the walls that will go across here will be yellow, it will have yellow doors, there will be yellow panelling here and there. Uh, and it's just because I want each block to be sort of like, I don't know if you see, get them where you live. I mean, I live in the UK. If you can't tell by my voice. Um, and 
it is uh, quite common practice these days in the UK. And you see some really fucking. Well, pardon. Me. You see some really ugly buildings going up, and then they chuck this really brightly coloured cladding on it, and because it's got brightly coloured cladding on it, and it's got bright colours on it, the local council goes, look, look, it's it's wonderful and lovely. It's like no, it's a hideous piece of architecture which has got some bright colours on it and apparently that fulfills a ticky box for you in your consumer ignorance and uh yeah I'll shut up now rave ranted enough but as you can see um, I'm putting this on quite th very thin in fact uh, I'm trying to move pigment around a bit here just because it might even be a bit too thin uh, you can see it's just sort of catching up against the wall at the back. One of the things I'm being aware of is if there are gaps uh, this will happily run down the walls and I don't want it to run down the walls because I don't actually want to paint the walls or the ceilings on the interiors. I'm just going to leave them white. I'm quite happy to do that because um, well I kind of like to get to the point where I'm actually showing the battle reports and I need these four set battle reports because right now, well, I mean, I could do battle reports in woods. I have a load of trees. Um, also, at the moment, I ha I ha I'm doing this, but I also need to paint my JSA so I have multiple factions so I can start actually giving you the battle reports. But yeah, as you can see, it's just very thin. Um, in fact, I might chuck away some water and chuck a little bit more ink in. Um, let me just see. And just giving a bottle shape. It's an old GW pot, you see. Um, I'm taking a lid off and I'm just going to dab my brush directly into it. I just want to pick up a little bit. Too much, maybe. Run that in with the. Just using the um, ink mix and then. See, it's, it's just. Uh, that's maybe a bit closer to what I want. Um, Unfortunately, I've got. I have rumples in my cutting mat, right? Uh, it's a just dumbassery on my part. I don't even know how I managed it. Um, cutting mats aren't cheap though, so I haven't replaced it. Uh, at some point in the distant future, no doubt I will. Um, but it's not too. But I want this variegated tone. I don't actually want a nice even tone. Like I say, I want it to look like those. I don't know if anybody's ever actually seen them. But you get sometimes you go into a house and it has these sort of old 60s tiles. I mean, there was a bit of a fashion for them a few years ago, but it's fashions these days just seem to be like, oh, this year's 60s, next year's 80s, and it comes and goes so quickly. It's like, oh, God, who knows what's what anymore? And it all just seems to be regurgitating anyway, so. Hell. I grew up in the 80s, and when the 80s started repeating themselves, it's like, whoa! Stop. Although I'm hoping that Adept of Titans comes out soon because oh, that is actually one of my dream games. I never got to play the original. Um, I just lusted over the original. So I may, I don't know, it depends how much it costs. I may manage to afford to do it though. Okay, so there you go. That's that inked up. I'm just going to get the others inked up. Um. And I will again go through the different buildings and tell you what ink I've used with which. Catch you in a mile. Okay, so number one we have Skank Brown. Uh, it has come out really, Skank Brown. But by the time of putting the walls in that and they'll be like a bright yellow, it'll actually sit all right together. Um, not totally happy with the finish. Um, but I'm not going to faff with it anymore because time constraints. On to the next one. So here is number two in blue. And again, it's not coming up immaculate. I don't expect it to. There's lots of bleed going on around areas. It's not completely dry either. But it just gives you an idea of kind of variegated tone created. I don't want everything to be um, completely even. Number three, this is a brown with a purple ink on top. 
Um, again, it's a bit bleeding happening, especially around the base of this. Um, I think that's something to do with where there's a slight gap, perhaps running around the bottom edge of, and and there's a, the this bit meets the floor. Um, it's just causing some tension in the ink, which is causing pigment to gather to it. But again, it's just it, I'm quite. This is probably the one I'm most happy with in some respects, actually. Um, this one and the next one, where it's crazy. Like I like the purpley brownie combination. Number four, uh, the green ink has done a lot more sort of blending patchiness, but I'm quite happy with that as well. It's um, I don't know if you ever see the kind of variegated tiles you get where there's a bit of a mishmash of colour in there. So overall, it's like they look like interior housing floors to me. Sort of a bit messy, a bit bland. Um, not perfect, but then what is? This is just a top-down view and a quick shoot through. Looking at these again, they're not quite dry yet. And, uh, you can see them all together here. They're really starting to look like buildings now. Each sort of stage bringing them back together. So I hope that this has been of interest to you, that you've found this of some use. Yeah, they're just on a carpet on my floor. I think they're looking good. Uh, that's about four foot width they're spread out over so you can get a real sense of scale now. Enjoy your modelling, have a good and take care everybody. Bye bye.